Championship week continues presented by Dick Sporting Goods. It's the SEC on ESPN. It's the SEC Tournament Championship from Nashville, Tennessee and Bridgestone Arena. Our matchup this afternoon, the one and two seeds and the number one team in the country against number 21, Kentucky and Arkansas. And in Kentucky's case, perfect. And it's a chance for you to see again today a really good team. I've had some really good teams. This is a really good team. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And Anthony Towns came over the top. Are you serious, Mr. Nestle? Oh, how was that shot? Being a part of an undefeated team, or a team like this is incredible. Boy, he was flying through the air. Just being our conference champs is a big deal. Nice pass. As a freshman to come in and win the SEC tournament, that would be a dream come true. Walls hits a three. Um, they left a bad taste in our mouth, so we're not shying away from the moment. We're not shying away from playing. Put, him up, put the wraps on this one. Can't play on our heels. We got to go in there just like with a level head and just play our style of basketball. Oh! The Hogs and the Cats for the SEC tournament title. And that sets it up for you from Bridgestone Arena. There's a whole bunch of blue in this building, 18,000 plus on hand, a sellout crowd for the SEC Tournament Championship. Welcome to Nashville, everybody. Brad Nestler with Dick Vitale. All right, Richard, they started back in November. They're still perfect, 33-0. and Did they go to 34-0 and today? Well, that's their goal, obviously. They want to win the SEC title, something they have not done the last three years. You look at this Kentucky team. Their defense is absolutely scintillating. You think about their defense, it is off the charts. We'll take a little look here as we take a look we talk about defense it's unbelievable when you think about the defense they play they have been absolutely super when you talk about Kentucky I'll say one thing they have length in their defense Brad here's the length I'm real look at that they make it so difficult for you to shoot a three over the top that size becomes a major factor then watch them converge on the basketball. Look at the defense. Look at the way they attack. They attack the basketball with that great size again. And then length. And then they go the other way. Transition for the layup. Booker with the pass. The Lyles. And they get a simple deuce inside. This is a very special Kentucky team. Look at the numbers. They're staggering. 35.2 field goal percentage. And Arkansas, Brad, the one thing they have going for them, they believe. Well, in the regular season, they had a shot, and they went up and down the court, and they got run out of the gym by Kentucky. Well, I talked to Mike Anderson before the game. He said, we are not changing our style. Our style basically is what he adopted from Nolan Richardson, 40 minutes of hell. They're going to run. They're going to open the court, and they feel very confident having beaten them twice last year. Before we tip, we go to our PA announcer in the National Anthem. Here's John George. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. The colors are being presented today by the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault Honor Guard. And with over 40 years together and over 40 million albums sold singing our national anthem, the legendary Oak Ridge Boys. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous flight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled
That's the way you do it in Music City, USA for a national anthem. Kentucky in its 112th season's already won 46 regular season SEC crowns. Today they go for their 28th SEC tournament title if they win it. And you can pretty much grab the rest of the conference, add it all up, and they still come up to what Kentucky has done over the years. Time to meet the starting lineups. And we go back to our PA announcer, John George. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Bridgestone Arena here in Nashville, Tennessee, for the 2015 SEC Men's Basketball Tournament and this championship game between the Arkansas Razorbacks and the Kentucky Wildcats. Now it's time to introduce our starting lineups for our game. For Arkansas, at guard, a 6'5 senior from Lepanto, Arkansas, number double zero, Rashad Madden. For Kentucky, at guard, a 6'6 sophomore from Richmond, Texas, number five, Andrew Harrison. Arkansas at guard, a six-foot freshman from North Little Rock, Arkansas, number 31, Anton Beers. For Kentucky at guard, a 6'6 sophomore from Richmond, Texas, number two, Aaron Harrison. Arkansas at forward, a 6'6 senior from Little Rock, Arkansas. Number two, Alandis Harris. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'10 freshman from Indianapolis, Indiana. Number 41, Trey Lyle. Arkansas at forward, a 6'8 junior from Birmingham, Alabama. Number 22, Jeff Corey Williams. For Kentucky at forward, a 6'11 freshman from Piscataway, New Jersey. Number 12, Carl Anthony Town. Fourth Arkansas at forward, a 6'11 sophomore from Little Rock, Arkansas, number 10, Bobby Portis. And for Kentucky at forward, a 7-foot junior from Olathe, Kansas, number 15, Willie Holly Stein. Head coaches today for Arkansas, Coach Mike Anderson. And for Kentucky, Coach John Calipari. There's your lineups, there's your coaches, and the people back in Fayetteville are going, wait a minute, on the starting lineups for the Hogs. There's a reason for that, wait a minute. Let's check in with Shannon Spake. Well, that's right, Brad. You may have noticed Michael Ball missing from that starting lineup. Corey Williams getting I checked with the team and they told me it's not for any reason. Mike Anderson just wanted to shake things up a little bit. Now, you mentioned Bobby Portis earlier in the Open. He told me he felt his performance yesterday was, quote, bad, but said today is a new day. And he's been looking forward to another shot at Kentucky since they lost two weeks ago at Rock. Now, the other big guy in this matchup, of course, is Willie Cauley-Stein, the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. He's coming off his best offensive performance in a month, a performance he's told me he needed for his confidence. But yesterday was yesterday, today is today, and Coach Calipari told his players it's, quote, time to get in the ring. Bobby well, did not have a good offensive game. He did have 12 rebounds, however, yesterday. So the one and two seeds in the SEC Tournament Championship game Arkansas 26 and 7, Kentucky 33 and 0. Our officials, Pat Adams, Doug Shows, and the master, Tony Green, who's got the ball in hand. If we can get the cats on the floor, the cats and hogs are set to have at it. 
Arkansas hasn't trailed in this tournament. Kentucky basically hasn't trailed all year. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you this, Arkansas, they got their first win in SEC competition since 2008. And I think the interesting matchup is certainly going to be Portis and Willie Cauley Stein. Defense against a guy with an offensive arsenal that can go inside, outside. Towns and Portis, jump ball, Kentucky to start things off from Nashville. I think it's really a key for Arkansas to have a good start, Brad. You gotta psychologically have that good start to feel you can beat Kentucky. Lyles bumped and kicked by Ja'Cory Williams, who normally isn't a starter, so he gets in the scorebook in the first 14 seconds. I think the reason he's on the floor, size. I think they're trying to have a little more size on the floor to negate that incredible size that Kentucky possesses. Qualls has got to be chomping at the bit, though. He was our player of the game yesterday with 15 points and six rebounds in the win over Georgia. To get here, Kentucky beat Florida and Auburn. And to get here, it was Tennessee and Georgia, the two that Arkansas beat. Little stone right now. Harrison, three, got it. If he makes threes, they go to another level. He's been up and down all year shooting the three. Surprised that Arkansas went to his house. It was Andrew Harrison just to straighten things out for you. The Twins out there, and one's number two, one's number five. You haven't seen Kentucky play, and if you haven't seen Kentucky play, you haven't been watching basketball. Here's a steal by Towns. Entry pass, Carly Stein going to the free throw line. I noticed in Willie Quilly Stein. I saw it yesterday, and I see him right here in the start of the game. He's become a little more assertive on offense. We're going to watch right here, Harrison. Andrew going to knock it down. He's been really playing well. You made that point yesterday, Brown, a good point. The Harrisons have really, I think, they've elevated their game here in the last about 10 games. Andrew had 18 points in the regular season matchup in the win over Arkansas. Willie Cauley Stein, 18 points yesterday, as Shannon talked about, seven rebounds, a couple of assists, three block shots. There's his numbers through the tournament. He can be as good as he wants. I really think sometimes he becomes too passive. He's got to be a little more hungry and want the ball. A 5-0 start for the Cats. Motion offensively, run their motion. Here's Portis' first touch against Towns. Nice feed underneath, block shot by Carly Stein on Orlando's Harris. What a great defensive play by Carly Stein from the weak side. Miles got it back. Andrew Harrison again for three. Got it. They come, baby. They come to play. These counts are ready. Arkansas going to lace it up and come to play. Because Big Blue is ready. They are ready. They want to be 34 and 0, baby. I actually have a whole lot of unused vacation days. But where am I going to go? I just don't have the money to travel right now. I usually just go back home to see my parents, so I can't exactly go globe trotting. If I had friends to go with, I'd go, but I don't want to travel by myself. Someday. There are no more excuses. Find the hotel you want and the flight you want, and we'll find the savings to get you there. Eight nothing, Kentucky. Willie Cauley Stein on one end is 55th block shot of the season, and it led to offense. Dick on the other end. They do a great job going from defense to offense. And there's Harrison making the big three. They're a touchdown lead, man, to start the game here. <laughs> touchdown and a two point conversion. Two threes by Andrew Harrison. Wall still on the bench. Mike Anderson called that timeout to try to just stop the momentum. And we talk about quick momentum in a minute and a half. That well, was a must timeout. Mike made a good call right there. In the regular season meeting, it took Kentucky eight seconds to get the lead, and they never relinquished it. This time it took 33 seconds. Portis missed the jumper. Kept alive by Williams. Ty Madden trying to get out of trouble on the baseline. There's cats all over him. Beard, three. Got it. That was big. That possession was big. But coming up with that three by Beard. And that stops the bleeding momentarily. First basket by the freshman Anton Beard. He's a true point guard. He's a creator. Moves into the starting role, sharing it with Madden. <laughs> 
Towns double teams back to Harrison. There's that ball screen. Did a great job using those ball screens. Lyles had it stripped by Beard. Nice Got play. Three on one right here. Got to make something happen. Beard will do it with the left hand. So the freshman's got the opening five for Arkansas. Nice little comeback after that timeout by Arkansas. And having made the basket, sets up their full court pressure. Although Kentucky has no problem with it. That's going to build a little confidence for him. Runner by Aaron Harrison. Towns rejected by Portis and Williams. Arkansas can cut it to one or tie it on this trip. Nice play by Portis there defensively. It'll be a foul on Andrew Harrison. This is what Arkansas loves to do. They come up with a steal and then they turn it into points on the other end. There it is. No defense, no offense. They can run, baby. I think of those great teams, Nolan Richardson, the Hall of Fame ahead. Portis missed the jumper and Carly Stein clears it. Andrew Harrison got poked in the eye going through that double team. Towns to Carly Stein. Makes the big. That's unselfish basketball. Great interior pass. Double up on the ball. Find the open guy from the weak side. Just tremendous unselfish basketball. And that's one of the keys of Kentucky. They are so unselfish. Beard. Fade away. Three. Kentucky comes back, leading by five. Their efficiency offensively is a thing of beauty. They really work so well. And then the second shots, they really hurt John the Collins. Pauly Stein trying to get to a double team. Portis, I think, is the guy that stripped it. Underneath, Harris scores for Arkansas. They got athletes. They got athletes. They can athletically match up here in Kentucky. Here comes the four new guys. <laughs> Just that one lapse on defense and John Calipari flew out of his chair and said you four are coming in as soon as we get a whistle. He told me before the game what he's doing now. Whoever's playing well of the five, they'll stay on the floor and bring four new ones to join. Towns lost the handle. Out of bounds I think to Arkansas. No, it's going to stay with Kentucky. But Arkansas has come back from trailing 8-0 to a 10-7 Kentucky lead. 15-34 timeout. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Sport begs of you this one simple question. Who will you be? And the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event. Now through March 31st, see your Lexus dealer. Well, the platoon system has worked through 33 wins so far this year. It's not quite what it used to be, five in, five out. For Arkansas, I got to give them credit. They were down eight to nothing, and all of a sudden, Anton Beard, the freshman, hit a three, then came up with a steal, gave it away, got it back, and scored five straight points for the six-foot freshman. And then underneath, scoring again, seven points to cut the lead to 10-7 right now. Hey, Beard made a big play. That was a must three when he knocked down that three for that. They got to get Portis going. They're going to win this game. Portis has to be a star. They won yesterday without him being a factor offensively, but as I mentioned, he did have 12 rebounds. But uh, an off day for him without a doubt yesterday. Six on the shot clock. Dakari Johnson's hook shot off the mark. Ty Madden with a rebound. And double zero bumps double zero. Marcus Lee with the foul. You know, Lee had a couple of real sloppy fouls yesterday. And that was a... That was not a real heady play right there, 60 feet from the goal. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, we see that second platoon in right now. Uh, Coach Calipari, he had some words for Willie Cauley-Stein after that last possession. He said, two hands. He thinks yesterday, you know, it was a wow Willie moment. Played to his potential. He's really looking for these guys to be best individuals, the best individuals that they can be. Two hands, be perfect. I'll tell you one thing, Shannon. I don't want to take anything away from his performance yesterday. Auburn didn't have any size whatsoever to battle him. He's got some size today to deal with. Portis off the window, not quite. Marcus Lee the rebound. I love this little guy. He's an engine that makes them really go. Eulis. Aaron Harrison missed the jumper. It's tipped out. Rashad Madden got the ricochet for the rebound. Here's Portis down low, bumped by Jakari Johnson underneath before he got the pass. Yeah, Tony Green right there on the call. Physical contact in the post. He's going to blow that whistle. 
Portis has got to really be active on the inside. He's going to face a lot of different bodies. He's going to face guys like Johnson. He's going to face people like Anthony Towns and certainly Willie Cole Stein. Ball kicked out of bounds, so we'll try it again on the baseline. It's amazing the way John Kelly, you would think at times his team was like 15 and 15. <laughs> he coaches on every possession. His heart and soul is in it, and it becomes contagious to the people on the floor. I love people with that passion. On the platoon system of that last time out, Aaron Harrison is the only guy that stayed in in the lineup for Kentucky. The other four newcomers on the floor. That's a sign that he feels he's playing really well. Alanis Harris bumped as he crossed the lane. I thought I heard a whistle. Not. I thought I heard one as well. Yeah, I thought I heard a whistle when he came across the lane. Inadvertent whistle somewhere. They watch him go across the lane. Do a jump stop. There he goes to the goal. Maybe that was a sneaker squeak. I don't know. Sounded like a whistle to me. And John Calperi still asking the officials. I think the same thing. 14-25 remaining in the first half. Score hasn't changed. Kentucky leads by three. Let's assume you love your money and that you'd like your money to stay your money. Then why do you keep buying light bulbs that do this to your money? At Cree, we designed our groundbreaking LED bulb to do exactly the opposite, saving you up to $226 over the life of the bulb. So the choice is yours. Save your hard-earned money with the Cree LED bulb, uh, or feed it to metaphorical money goats. The Cree LED bulb. Kentucky jumped out to an 8-0 lead. Arkansas battled back to cut it to 10-7. I think everybody's still questioning whether or not there was a whistle on that last play in the lane. At any rate, it's Arkansas ball. I tell one thing, John Calipari was so animated in that timeout. I think he knows that his kids are going to have a real challenge right here. Portis thought about a three. He'll take it and score it. Tie game. That's his 13th he's made. He was 12 for 27 coming at this game, shooting threes. And Kentucky having a little bit of difficulty getting across the timeline. They do to Booker. He lobs it underneath for Dakari Johnson. Marcus Lee tips it in. And there's one of the great strengths, the second shot. Getting on the offensive glass. No one does it better in the nation. Portis is thinking about another one out there. <laughs> the other teams would love to have a Marcus Lee. Yeah. And he, you know, he doesn't play a lot of minutes with that. Madden, kick out. Harris. And Adjikori Williams. He'll take the shot and score. I tell you, great execution. It's a patient steer by Arkansas. Got the wide open look. Tied at 12. Talk about a coach that took a timeout in the first minute of the game because it was eight to nothing. That baby paid off, Dick. Absolutely. For Mike Anderson. Yeah. That was a great timeout. We said it earlier. A tremendous timeout. Booker goes straight up with it. Arkansas has got a chance to lead this trip. Harris for three. Marcus Lee with a rebound. Marcus Lee really active coming off the bench. Could rebound. Here's Lee on the other end. Going to stop. I'm telling you what. That guy's like the 10th man. Are you serious? Are you serious? Marcus Lee's got star ability. He's fired up, too. He didn't score much. Look at him on defense now. He's clapping his hands. Yeah. Big smile on his face. Big Blue Nation's fired up, too. Yeah, they love it. Oh, they love it. Look at them all blue here. Portis drives against Johnson and scores. So, well, wow, Razorback's got to love this guy. His rise stock is going up and up as a player. And on the scouts, Chad Ford and company, our guy, makes the players for the NBA. Kentucky has numbers, and Booker scores for three. Oh, did he shoot the three? But don't look away to the crowd. Get back and play defense. And Arkansas turns it over. We had a good one, buddy. We got a good one. We're getting paid for this. This is fun. Are you? Really? <laughs> I've been stealing money for 36 years. Just under 12 minutes to play in the first half. John Calipari will be with Shannon when we come back. His team is up by three. But we got a good one, as Dick said, between the Cats and the Hogs, including the three-pointer by Booker that just gave Kentucky the lead back.
Eight minutes into an entertaining game so far. Kentucky had a big lead. Arkansas battle back. The Harrison twins on the outside. Andrew Harrison's hit two threes to give Kentucky the early lead. They've played inside, outside ball. Carl Anthony Towns to Willie Cauley Stein underneath for an easy bucket. They do a great job, Brad, when the double team comes, finding the open man. They really have great vision for that play to make it happen. Let's check in with Shannon and John Calipari. Well, Coach, after that first Arkansas timeout, they've been able to put together a little bit of offense. What do you want to see out of your guys defensively? We've made some shots, and you know they're not going to go away. This is going to be a 40-minute game, and I just want my guys to play through all the bumps, all the t just play. I want to hear them saying anything to the officials, play. Thank you, Coach. Coach Calipari did have a little bit of uh, confidence for Aaron Harrison. He said, good job. Yeah, he's the one that stayed in when the other platoon came in. Michael Qualls checks in for the first time today. He was our player of the game yesterday, a normal starter. Didn't start today, as Shannon told you before the tip. He gives him that high riser. He's a skywalker. Qualls can really get up. He's a great athlete. Pauly Stein to Towns down low. Spin, score. I think they got him back in. Offensive foul. Yeah, they got him back in. Jody Green with the ball down in the post. There's big Anthony Towns inside, makes contact. Some people say a little flop there. Let's see right here. That was a good job, though, by Manny Watkins, assistant coach's son, who held his ground against the big guy and gives it back to Arkansas offensively. And he's a special guy. He held his ground again. Our guy, Chad Ford, has a rating number two in the nation behind Oakland. Towns had a hand on the rebound and then lost it out of bounds. So I can sort of team, a lot of people don't realize this. Kentucky does not lead the conference in scoring. Arkansas does at 78.5. They are one and two, however. Arkansas first, Kentucky second. Chad is really animated. He knows this is a battle. When he tells Shannon this is going to go 40 minutes, I really believe he feels that. He just got a bench warm, too. That's what the momentary timeout was about. Watkins, the follow is oh, goaltending oh. on Carly Stein. Good call by Tony Green on that. You don't usually see Kentucky giving up those offensive rebounds when Portis gets on the inside. Yep, good call. Good call. Excellent call. Now backward pressure again. Take him after you. Relentless. Willis doesn't have any problem with it, though. He weaves through the traffic. Booker straight up triple. Rimmed out. So love those Razorback teams with Carlos Williamson, and Scotty Furman, and company, and Ola Richardson. There's not a lot of Arkansas fans here, but if they score this trip, you're going to hear from them. Not that time, though. Carly Stein with the rebound. Willis really puts pressure on the defense. Oh, here. nobody cut him off. Nobody stopped the ball. You got to stop the ball. That's the first rule in transition. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Even they're moving the ball, taking shots, not struggling. It's the first time Qualls has touched the ball here in the opening 10 minutes of the half, and he's going to take a shot and got it. He said MVP yesterday, didn't waste any time. Make, right now he's matching with Willie Cauley Stein. If I'm Willie Cauley Stein, I take him on the interior. I try to post him. Tied for the fourth time here in the half on the three-pointer by Qualls. Look at the size differential. I know he's a high riser, Qualls, but that's a lot of size. Well, he's giving away about six inches to Cauley Stein. A switch off now, and it's oh, Anthony Bell he's a trying, to, trying to guard Cauley Stein. That's like you trying to guard him. <laughs> nice move. Hook shot. Paul Anthony Towns off the window, and Kentucky back in front. He's, by so, two. he's so efficient, Brad, on the inside. Paul Anthony Towns. I'll never forget how he finished the LSU game, both offensively, and he did a great job with an offensive rebound. Bell over Ulis. Forced his shot. Bad shot. Bad shot. First real bad shot I've seen him take. Ulis, a lob underneath. Tough catch, and a foul before the shot. Ulis should not have passed that ball. He should have went right to the basket. It was wide open. You could have put a back truck there. Kingsley with the foul. 
See right there, he had a direct lane, and he's trying to flip the ball up for the layup, but that's one time he should have been a little bit hungry to score. And look at Towns. Are you kidding me? This guy is a big-time performer. His numbers would be unreal if he played 30 minutes. That was a case where Euless should have been a little more selfish. He talked about how they share the ball. He was trying to get it underneath to the big guy for the dunk, and it didn't work. Now they go inside to him. He backs in on a double team. is fouled, and they'll go to the line. Well, the ESPN Bracketology Special is coming up a little bit later on today. Everything you need to know about the field of 68. I'll tell you who's going to, into the tournament. Can anybody stop Kentucky? The ESPN Bracketology Special presented by Staples. It's tonight at 7. For live Sports Center updates at 5.30 on ESPN. Mr. Vital will be part of that. Yeah, we'll have a lot of fun getting out here and sharing some big stories. Big question will be, what about the bubble teams? What about teams that lost 13 games? Indiana, Texas, teams like them, UCLA. Will they get in over teams that have great, great records like Murray State? It's a great addition to the promo. Good job, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning from the best now. Where can we get it? <laughs> Madden on the drive, cut off by Andrew Harrison. Nice pass. Kingsley rejected by Towns. He went up too slow. Oh, they got numbers here. Aaron Harrison. Oh, you're Get me out of here. Get me out of here. That's unbelievable. I can't believe it. The Blue Nation can't believe it. Qualls missed a three, got it back. You think He'll take another right? jumper and you think short again. Hey, Brad, you think that'll make the highlights real? I think you better so. believe that on the ESPN's top ten. A rejection by Towns on one end. Euless to Harrison, Harrison to Cauley Stein. Are you serious, <laughs> Mr. Rodgers? Flip it up on top. Willie Cauley Stein, a little <laughs> showtime. I think Euless has changed the whole tempo of the game when he comes in. He really does, Brad. Yeah, he's quick. Portis, fadeaway jumper. Wise underneath. Nice offensive rebound and score. That's his great ability. He's a high riser, we said earlier. He's got great bounce off the floor. Athleticism. Kentucky by four with eight to play in the first half. Euless again, quickly into the front court. He loves looking for his buddy, Mr. Booker, who can shoot the three. Aaron Harrison can shoot the three, too. There it goes. Yes, Aaron Harrison making big shots. You got to get back on defense. They run that ball right up the court. Walls needs help. Picking up that dribble. That's a no-no. Young kids out there, you don't want to pick up your dribble. Look the Booker. Madden drives against Booker, throws it up, they'll go to the line. Arkansas playing very well with 7.22 to go. They're still trailing by seven. Mike will talk with Shannon when we come back. All that glitter. Championship game in Nashville as we take a look at our tournament challenge resume brought to you by Allstate. Last year, Arkansas was an NIT team there, without a doubt, an NCAA team, 26 and 70 as you take a look at their resume. You know, I look at that resume, I see BBIs, RPIs. I got my VBDI, my Vital Ball Dome Index. Let's check in with Shannon. Coach, after that first timeout, you guys were able to get some offense going. What do you want to see out of them after this timeout? I want to see us continue to share the basketball, keep making hard cuts to the basket, get a little more physical on the defensive end, rebound the basketball. Uh, Kentucky is a, a really tall team, so we got to get into their bodies. Thank you, Coach. Mike's got about uh, seven minutes and then 20 more minutes of voice left before the NCAA tournament. Got to make free throws. You're trying to pull an upset. You better make your free throws. That's certainly big. This is a guy that can 87% of the time, anyway. 
He was 32 for 39 the other day in the free throw line. That's Kai Madden's first it's been a point solid, of the game. Solid point guard for them. Kai's a crafty veteran. He's got great size at 6'5". That helps, too. 152 assists coming in on the year. And got them both. They actually play two point guards because now when Beard got the start, they're playing two guys that are really point guards, not really strong perimeter shooters. Sets up their press. At least they try. Kentucky hasn't had any problem with it so far. That press tries to take out of your rhythm, but this guy's been able to get him into their rhythm. Tyler Yulis. Holly Stein down to Lyle and back, and he threw it away. Here comes Beard, who had the first five points of the game for Arkansas. Porter's got to be a little more active without the ball. He's got to want the ball. Gets it now, but he's 25 feet away from the hoop. Got Willie Porter Stein playing him. Defense against offense. Walls. Back to Portis, got Pauly Stein in the air and drove for that shot. Tough shot right there. They made him pick a tough shot. Young kids out there, watch Ulysses. His head's always up. He's always looking at people. He's not looking at the ball. Has great vision on the floor. Kind of like you when you're working the crowd before the game. <laughs> always have your head up. <laughs> the Curry Jackson. Tremendous move inside. They got a multiple number of people that can get in that post and score. And Qualls trying to get it to Portis, and I guess no, nobody touched it. It's a real bad turnover right there. Yeah, Johnson down in the post. Think about Johnson there, think about Lyles there, Willie Coley Stein there, and certainly Anthony Towns. Tremendous move right there. Drop step, go to the goal with strength. Euless kick out Aaron Harrison. Got it. You know, Aaron Harrison gets the three, but it was the creativity of the little guy, Euless, penetrate and kick it out. He's originally what I used to say for years, the three D man. Biggest lead of the game for the Cats up ten. And a blocking foul on Aaron Harrison. Take a look at Euless. John likes it. Look at the smile on his face. 33 and all make you smile. Oh, that's a sarcastic smile he's yeah. given. He didn't oh, buy the here foul. He goes. Look at that drive, draw, dish the rock. Oh, a stroke. Both Harrison twins now, each with a couple of triples. I think it's great news, great news for Kentucky. That the second half of the year, Harrison's have really elevated again. I think there's a reason for it. The reason very simply, practice competition versus Euless and Booker on a regular basis. Plus, John Calipari has said when Andrew Harrison penetrates into the lane, good things happen. He likes him to be as aggressive as possible. Both the Harrison twins have been aggressive from outside the arc. And now Doug Shaw's having a conversation with John Calipari. I'm not sure what it's about, but Pat Adams is at the scores table. He might be inviting him after the game to the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, yeah. He might be taking him up there. Hey, you know, you You've been to the Grand Ole Opry. Sean Farnham's been to the Grand Ole Opry. Kaylee Hartung's been to the Grand Ole Opry. What has Brad done all week? Well, why don't Sit you sit in my room? You should come with us. I would have loved to have you join. Right. Yeah. Vince hey, Gilwood is serenading. The invite's a little late, partner. <laughs> I'll get you in the summer. <laughs> hey, uh, you talk about Yulis? 13 assists and only three turnovers in the tournament. That's a heck of a ratio. Would have been in a four to one. Atlanta's Harris at the free throw line. And Arkansas will get it back. You've always said one of the factors that has to exist to beat Kentucky, somebody's got to make some threes. That two is off the mark. Aaron Harrison. Oh, look at the Carly Stein. Oh. Tom gets. Let's go. Willie Carly Stein with the catch. Well, what about the look and the pass of Tyler Eulis? He goes down 14. Assist with only three turnovers. I love that little guy. Madden short. Harris can't follow. Ball out to Arkansas. Willie Quillenstein showed his ability, his agility to run the floor. But what about the little guy? He wastes no time. Head up, sees the floor, and makes the pass. Great pass, great catch. And then the flush. He was a whiteout. Can you mentioned him as a whiteout. <laughs> he was a whiteout in high school. 
little bit like Harold Carmichael back in the day. He was pretty good. Yeah. Florida is not going to factor at all again today. No, the defense really matching up with it, making it tough for him to get good looks. Madden's going to take a three. In, out, last touch by Portis, Kentucky ball. I think the next four minutes are vital, vital for Arkansas. They got to stop any run by Kentucky in the next four minutes. The last two games have been a struggle for Bobby Portis. The SEC player of the year coming in averaging almost 18 points and close to nine rebounds a game. And the last two days have not been his strong suit, that's for sure. That was three for 20 in the last two games thus far. And he's been brilliant all year long. We were tied at 19 at one point. It's a 16 to 4 run since by the Wildcats. And we're going to have a foul on Rashad Madden. I think a lot of that responsibility goes to the kid who hasn't scored much. Scored a deuce. Eulis. Eulis has put so much pressure on Arkansas, breaking the press, finding open guys, creating opportunities. Checking with Shannon with more on Eulis. Well, he not only puts pressure on the other team, he challenges his own guys. Carl Anthony Towns, he told me Eulis is a, quote, natural-born leader. Every day in practice, he goes up against the best in the country, and he holds his own. Smallest guy on the team, including the coaching staff. And yet, here he goes for three. Dakari Johnson, nice job keeping it alive for Kentucky. He might be the biggest guy on the floor when the ball's in his hands, though. Yeah. When the rock's in his hands, he's a giant. Aaron Harrison, triple in route. Nice job by Arkansas as Dakari Williams. Got a piece of the rebound. Portis on the other end is fouled. With a timeout, 3.39 remaining in the half, and it's Kentucky leading by 12. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Capital One Venture Card. Earn unlimited double miles you can use with no blackout dates. Flashback 20 years ago, SEC Championship in Atlanta, Nolan Richardson, Rick Pitino, Kentucky roared back from regulation and overtime deficits of 19 and 9 points to win its 19th SEC Tournament Championship. They beat Arkansas 95-93 in overtime, a thriller at Clinch. UK's fourth straight SEC Tournament title. Who called that game, you might ask? Look at those guys. How about that? Wow, look at that there. Look at you. Brad wow. Nessler and Jimmy yeah. Dykes. We both had a lot more hair, and it was a lot darker. He never had hair 20 years ago. It didn't matter. I never had hair. You know, Jimmy Dykes now <laughs> doing a great job down there coaching Arkansas. Yeah, I know Jimmy's Morgan watching State. today. His yeah. hogs down 12, though. They, they were at one point playing really well, and I looked at you and said, they're playing lights out, and they're still down eight. Well, yeah. now they're down a dozen. Well, they're down a dozen. It's a danger time. they got to convert on the free throw line here, lock it up defensively, and go a little spurt to go into the locker room with some momentum. Boy, the last 90 minutes have not been the greatest basketball that Bobby Portis has played, that's for sure. Here he is at the free throw line. He's probably weighing on his mind, too. He needs a couple of baskets to get himself into the flow. He yeah, he needs something to go right. He, yeah, he doesn't seem to be in the flow. You know, you think about the SEC right now, a little nerve-wracking time, I would say, for LSU, Mississippi. I think the only locks, the BBDI just kicking it out. Well, Kentucky, obviously, Arkansas, and Georgia. Yeah. I think those three are locks. I think from what I saw this morning, LSU and Ole Miss were the, in the last four in-group of Dillonati, I think. It's a danger time. Better to be the last four out. Yeah. Joe Dillonati knows what he's doing. And works at it religiously. He's like our Bell Kuiper. <laughs> Timeout taken by Kentucky. Speaking of the bracketology with a timeout in a 35-24 game. Kentucky obviously is the number one seed overall. Arkansas looks like a number five. Georgia 10, LSU and Ole Miss in the last four in category. You know, a team that nobody's talking about and really has a great opportunity, makes a big noise, Villanova. They're not a sexy team in the right. eyes. You hear all about the Kentuckys. Oh, they got to worry about Wisconsin. They're going to worry about Duke. Well, people better start taking a look at Jay Wright's team because that team is legitimate. 
Well, you can tune in tonight to find out who's in, who's out, who's playing whom, and when. You can get it first and get it fast exclusively on CBS at 6 o'clock on the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. Can't wait to join me, Jay, the whole gang. Have a little fun. Friend Greg Gumbel will bring you that one at CBS, and then Dick will be along with the whole gang on our Bracketology show to follow. And every year we'll have teams to scream about that we think should be in, and they don't get in. It will be annual rent. They can go back and play my rent in 79, and it will not change today. Last 320 of the half. See if Arkansas can get a stop and try to get back and maybe to single digits in this game before halftime. They're in the zone right now. They've been shooting the ball well. Kentucky over the top. Aaron Harrison over the top for two. Harrison's playing on another level, playing like they did last year, leading Kentucky to the final game. They were beaten by the UConn Huskies. This year they want to get to the final game and cap it to be 40-0. It'll be a disappointing year in the eyes of a lot of big rumors if they don't leave with that gold trophy. Isn't that sad in the way? Yeah. I mean, having a gear like these <laughs> kids, how could you be disappointed if they're like 39-1? Beard. Pauly Stein just takes it out of midair. Look at Jonas, always pushing the ball up the court. Looking for people, eyes up. Great vision, great feel. Amazing, it looked like he was going to take the yeah. three and for a freshman to think, wait a minute. I got four McDonald's All-Americans out there. I'm going to let Tucker take it instead. That's the second opportunity. Look at that ball movement. Look great at that pass. Inside and a foul. Look at the pass. He anticipated. He didn't just react. He anticipated ahead of time and knew where he wanted to throw that basketball. Watch him. Right now, how he anticipates. Watch that comes the offensive rebound. As Booker reverses the ball, bam! Right to the cut. Akari Johnson, his third point of the first half. You know, if it wasn't for the free throw line, John Calipari would have two other national championships. He lost two cha national championships because they were poor on the free throw line. Last year they didn't shoot well, and the year, two years prior against Connecticut, did not shoot well on the free throw line. Yesterday they went over Auburn, they were 30 out of 35 from the free throw line. Yeah, they're much better this year. Bakari Johnson coaxed both of those free throws in, and it's a 15 point lead. He has the luxury though that coaches don't have. Every day in practice is a battle for PT for playing time. He's got people. You don't want to play? I got somebody else going to play. Man. You better perform. Most teams are looking for five guys that can play. John's got about 12 guys that can play. Madden rimmed out a three. Polly Stein with a rebound. Kentucky take Look at the chance. pass ahead. Booker couldn't handle it, but it was a beauty from Euless. A one-hand push pass. Ends up being a turnover in what could have been a very pretty play. You know when I look at stats, the minutes played, Ulysses' minutes are going up and up. John Calipari recognizes how valuable he is to this team. Portis asking for it. Pauly Stein all over him defensively. So far, Willie Pauly Stein and Kentucky winning the battle against Portis. Now they get it to oh, him. Nice play. And he's fouled by Pauly Stein. Portis did a great job posting up right there. Showed his ability to post in the low box. Here he's, he wants the ball. Give me the ball. Get me the ball. It's a lost art. The best I ever saw. Entering the ball to the post. Bounce pass wise. Pearl Washington years ago at the Qs. Yeah, nice entry. Nice angle. Had a good angle there for the feed. Portis with a free throw. Six points for Bobby Porters coming up. Uh, the Heroes Charge halftime report. Carl Ravitch, Sean Farnham, along with Bruce Pearl. Yeah, well, Bruce Pearl getting a lot of AT, a lot of air time. I mean, it's going to help recruiting, man. Help recruiting. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Hey, you know Coach Porters in the AU basketball? He learned from really a terrific guy. A little trivia here. Corliss Williamson. Really? Yep, Corliss Williamson. Coached him in the AAU. Corliss, who had... Uh, his jersey retired about a month and a half ago at Bud Walton. I was so happy when Nolan Richardson was named to the Hall of Fame along with Gary Williams so deservedly. I mean, Nolan, who Mike learned so much from, almost went back to back in national titles. And I was there less than a month ago when Nolan's jersey or name hit the Raptors at Bud Walton. That was a special night. 
Here's a little guy Dick's been talking about, Tyler Eulis. Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Ohio last year and has stepped in here and as Shannon said earlier, become a leader even though he's the smallest guy on the team and the youngest guy on the team. And getting those minutes, he knows that he's doing really well because the minutes, man, are starting to pile up. He's staying on the floor. You play, you stay. You don't, you sit. Absolutely. It's like our business. You don't do a job, you're gone. I'm surprised you've been around this long. Oh, I knew I set you up for that. I knew I set you up for that one. Oh, that was a lot. I couldn't get away that was with a lot. That. That's the light of the day. 41 25. Biggest lead of the ballgame. You know, Kentucky's really played well here. To be up like this, because Arkansas has done everything they could yep. trying to challenge him. And Kentucky just has too many players. Madden had it stripped by Eulis. Eulis handed in deflection. He's looking to find someone. He's going the other way, oh, and he has it stuffed out of bounds by Harris. See what I thought he should have done? Flip it over his shoulder to a trailer, but he didn't know the trailer was. You see the trailer yeah, behind he had him? Lyles right behind yeah. him. Lyles should have been yelling, screaming, I'm behind you, I'm behind you. He would have flipped it to him, jammed it, and the place would have rocked. Here's Aaron Harrison's going to throw it three quarter court back to Eulis, who can listen to Jack Calipari before he comes back into the front court under a minute and a half. They have played an excellent half, and even though they had a play against subpar size and competition yesterday, they played really well against Auburn. Uh, and thrown out of bounds, one of the few mistakes they've made. Six turnover by Kentucky. Should have shot the ball there. There's another sign of unselfishness, trying to make the pass for the dunk. He had a little basket right there. John's probably telling him, it's great for the basket. Kentucky's got 12 assists on their field goals here in the first half. At sharing the basketball. I'll tell you one thing, John has done an amazing job getting these kids to buy in to play for the name on a jersey and not worry about stats. There's Look about that. a three-second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. The Big Blue Nation standing as one here at Bridgestone Arena in the final moments of the half. They appreciate what they've seen out of this team. Six on the shot clock. Beard forces one over Harrison. Carly Stein ahead to Aaron Harrison. He'll have a shot before the buzzer, maybe. Turnover. Arkansas will get it back with 2.5. You know, for all those people out there saying, well, you know what, Kentucky, they're going to lose a lot of these guys, go to the NBA. I hate to tell you, they got the number one class in the country <laughs> coming in next year. The number one class again. Just some new names to get used Just to. Just some new names. Beard, long ball, going to get intercepted by Dakari Johnson. Eulis, half court. Oh, oh. Almost had it. oh. That would have put a capper on a good first half for Kentucky. Maybe better than good. Maybe great. Maybe in route to 34 and 0. Great balance, sharing the basketball. They've been brilliant again. Arkansas has not played badly, and they trail by 16. Kentucky 41, Arkansas 25 at halftime. Coming up, the Heroes Charge halftime report. Carl Rabbit and the gang will be along after these messages. Halftime in Nashville. Cats with a big lead over the Hogs. SEC Championship game. It is the Heroes Charge Halftime Report. We welcome you back to Bridgestone Arena, Nashville, Tennessee, and you can see the sea of blue. You wake up this morning, there's a blue sky, the streets are blue, the building's blue, and uh, right now Arkansas singing the blues, 41-25, Sean Farnham, and of course the Auburn coach Bruce Pearl joining us now as well. Uh, as good as Kentucky has been, Arkansas's halftime speech is going to be what? Because they were dominated in just about every phase, and they really played a pretty good half. Well, I think it starts with eliminating the scoring drought. We were talking about it, Bruce. Uh, you, you go seven minutes without making a field goal. It's not just about making the field goals, but it's the availability to get into your press. It's hard to set up your press when you're not making field goals because immediately you're having to get back in transition against the Kentucky Wildcats. I think it was as much about Kentucky's defense and their size and to be able to be keep Arkansas on the perimeter. Arkansas's best offense was the offensive rebound. So the problem with that is what happens when you give up, when you go send guys to the offensive glass, Kentucky is going to run out in transition, and those big guys will finish. Well, and their floor spacing is so elite, and you know that they've got the length to be able to throw it up into the rim. 
And to me, there are so many opportunities that they had. And when you get a dunk like this, what we saw was spurts out of Kentucky. We saw them score, and then they come back and get a three-pointer. And then they break you down, and that's what makes them elite. Well, you've got to get behind the ball there. There are five red jerseys that were not behind the basketball. And that's a decision that sometimes you got to make as a coach. It's hard for Arkansas to change who they are. 40 minutes of hell, the fastest 40 minutes right. of basketball. That's going to get them run out of this building if they continue to play fast. they got to do what Wisconsin would do. Make it a half-court game, lower the scoring down so they got a chance. 40 minutes of hell usually means the other team suffers. But right now, Arkansas is suffering. And Bobby Portis, who struggled yesterday, player of the year in the conference, is not engaged here. Last night I was at the Grand Ole Opry. Diamond Rio gave me their drumsticks. They're looking for a rhythm. they got to go through Bobby Portis. I'm telling you, they had to Kari Johnson him a couple times in the first half, and that's when Bobby Portis was at his best. He has to be able to exploit that match matchup utilizing his speed his lateral quickness to get by to Kari Johnson if Johnson's not on him they've got to post him up at times throughout the course of this year he's the conference player of the year they've gone away from the hot hand if you have any chance here in the second half you need Bobby Portis to get this active extend out on the perimeter and then attack the legs of a Dakari Johnson. Well, when I was at Tennessee, we played against Greg Oden all day long. We try to bring Greg Oden out away from the basket with a big, like a Bobby Portis. And, and, and that's a tough matchup for him. But you know what? The youngster, Dakari, he adjusted. He did a little bit better job. Yes. They doubled him down a little bit. It, that matchup wasn't as a big a factor in the second 10 minutes as it was in the first. Walls didn't start, came in, gave them a little bit of an energy spurt. But again, their two best players aren't being a factor, and that's a difference maker. And that goes back to what we've said. The storyline has been all season long for Kentucky. It's the defensive end of the floor. Their ability to take away your options. You know, the fewest number of assists that a team gives up per game is the Kentucky Wildcats, which means they force you to play one-on-one. -on -one. They take away the fluidity to your offense, especially in the half-court set. They hold their opponents to just around seven assists a game. That's remarkable, Coach. If Arkansas comes back and win this basketball game, Qualls has got to start to light it up and get hot, and Arkansas has got to knock down some shots from the perimeter. Right. I heard Coach Calhoun earlier today talk about why UConn does so well now. They have great guard play, whether it be Napier or Kemba Walker. Ashley Judd loves the guard play of Kentucky. <laughs> Ulysses has got a lot of minutes. He was a difference maker in that first half and the two Harrison twins outstanding as well. Things going well for Big Blue. What about UConn Blue? They take on a very, very game and number one seed a little bit later on. We'll talk about that when we come back. This halftime report is presented by Heroes Charge, the hit mobile game available on the App Store and Google Play. Download now. Okay, is it soft full? The Heroes Charge halftime report continues. VCU and Dayton out of the A-10. Both these teams going to get into the tournament. Dayton up five off the miss. Jordan Siebert flashes down a three. And Lana Shaka's smarts team, who had suffered a devastating, what appeared to be devastating injury at the beginning of the year. They now have a 33-26 lead. How about 25-9? and nine? And they lost their best player. Sunbelt Conference, Georgia Southern, Georgia State. Ryan Harrow, formerly of Kentucky. Kevin Ware, formerly of Louisville. Under eight to go, up by five, Georgia State. Ware sizes up his defender and throws in a rainbow. They're up by seven. Marcus Kreider then would find Ware. The little floater goes, and he gets banged. Georgia State by three. And then Ware, Kreider. We're seeing a lot of that here with the big size advantage, Georgia State. Up 5, 25, 19 right now. All right, after us, UConn takes on the number one seed, SMU. UConn has used a number of big shots over the years. Ray Allen, a game winner to give UConn their first Big East tournament title back in 96. A couple of years later, March 19th, 1998, Rip Hamilton was on the scene. Game winning shot against Washington in the Sweet 16 after several missed UConn attempts. Carl, are you trying to insinuate that UConn during this time of year will hit big shots and win games that maybe they're not supposed to? Uh, the video's doing it, I'm not doing it. <laughs> the video's letting you know that. Bruce knows it, they keep doing it. And in March of 2011, it was the ankle breaker of Kemba Walker at Madison Square Garden, 76-74 win in the Big East quarterfinals. And then there was Shabazz Napier leading them to a 
Big East NCAA title. And of course, this year it's Ryan Boatwright who's been getting it done. Seemingly the difference between this year and the years prior is that Boatwright's kind of been a one-man show with the emergence of guys like Hamilton and Purvis. Well, is there another one in him? I think there is, and I tell you what, we've seen this dialogue before, a team that has their back to the wall, and you've got a great guard that can carry the load. We saw that last year, yep. and now we're seeing it again with Ryan Boatwright. They win today, they're in the NCAA tournament, they're a dangerous team because this team still defends exactly the way that Kevin Ollie well, wants SMU's to. a very good team and no a very question. good coach, and Larry Brown, very good. That's UConn. That comes up next, 3.15 Eastern time on ESPN. And watch ESPN, the American final. Well, it was a good half for Arkansas. And like everybody that's played a decent half, they're down to Kentucky. They're down big, 41-25. Second half of the SEC championship is coming up. This has been the Heroes Charge Halftime Report. Continues presented by Dick Sporting Goods. And a half to go. The SEC on ESPN, the SEC Tournament Championship from Nashville, Tennessee. And Kentucky in control right now at halftime as they lead 41 to 25. And the reason they're leading 41 to 25, they're dominating right now. 52% from the floor, five three pointers. They have 12 assists on 14 made field goals. That is sharing the ball, and Dick Vitale, they share it, they get in transition, they run, and they do this kind of thing too. Well, they do a great job defensively, as we know. <laughs> Arkansas shooting 29%. There's the block shot, and a lunch of a transition. There's the kick out by Eulis, a little lob up on top, Willie Corley Stein. There's another great look for the catch by Willie Corley Stein. There's that catch, slam jam. He's making a run for MVP. I tell you what, they are scary good. I really believe that. That's how they're frightening because Arkansas came out and was not intimidated and was playing fairly well. And then all of a sudden, see, I think Kentucky's back into the same mode that they were earlier in the year right. when they embarrassed Kansas, UCLA. when they blew out UCLA yeah. at a four touchdown lead before UCLA <laughs> blinked an eye, and when they beat North Carolina. And they're starting to play that way. In fact, John told me before the game, I want my kids to get back that edge that they had earlier in the year. Looks like they have it right now. 41-25, yep. we check in. Third member of our team, Shannon Spake. Shannon. Well, hey, Brad, both coaches, they had a key word moving into this second half. For Mike Anderson, movement. He wants to see more movement with that basketball. He told his guys, we are not a selfish team. He wants that to open it up because he feels that will then open up their defense. As far as Coach Calipari, it's all about communication. He told me it feels like there were some breakdowns defensively on the pick and roll, also on switching some screens. So those those are areas he'll be looking to perfect in the next 20 minutes. I was going to say perfect is the only thing they can do. They're playing pretty darn well. Arkansas is not playing bad, as Dick said, and still they trail 41 to 25 as we start the second half. Look who's starting on the ball. Look who's starting on the ball. Tyler Eulis at the points for Kentucky. Arkansas's 25 points, by the way, matches a season low for a half. See Eulis being rewarded for his great effort in the first half. He was really like a star out there. Cordes couldn't handle a pass, and that's not the way Arkansas wanted to start the second half. Kentucky's defense has been suffocating all year. Look at Michael Anderson. Your hands sometimes on the sideline as a coach are tied. When they're playing well, Kentucky, there's not much you can do. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if anybody in the NCAA tournament has something to do about Kentucky's undefeated run. Gonna take an awful good basketball team to beat them. I can tell you that. Well, it's gonna take a team, not only a good basketball team, but a team that's gonna have to excel both inside, outside, defensively, and really have a major, major performance. And but Kentucky has to have an off night yep. on the, top of it. But the one beauty of college basketball, Brad, if it was four out of seven like the NBA, there's nobody have a chance against that. Right. Four out of seven. But, but it's one, a one-shot deal. Yes, sir. One bad night, the party could be over. I mean, four out of seven. Can you imagine who's gonna beat that four out of seven <laughs> on a college level? I'm not convinced the Knicks could beat them four out of seven. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Harrison picked up his third foul, so he's going to have to sit 
I should say that, though, because they're a little down right now to play without Carmelo. But, I mean, really, you look at the Knicks lineup. I'm not convinced I want that. Why are you taking a shot at the Knicks? There's other teams that are bad. <laughs> but they're real bad, bad. <laughs> they're real bad, bad. <laughs> talk about it tomorrow, man. Mike, look at the show. Look at the ESPN radio. Bobby Porter should love to be a factor in this second half. He hasn't been for the last two days. That kid has, though. Anton Bird. As he opened the first half with the first five points for Kentucky, he's got the first basket of the second half. He's a crafty little guy. He has a good feel for the game, just forced the turnover. Well, Hooker just stepped on the sideline. Just forced a little turnover. That's really lacking that focus right there, but Hooker, you got to know the landscape of that court. you got to know where you are. There's that drive by Beard getting in the lane. Beard only averages six points a game. He's got seven here early in the second half. See, so many teams worry about when you get a big lead about letting the team come back. The one thing John Calabria is going for, these kids have to play hard or they know they're coming out of the game. And five other great ones are coming in. Portis, nice drive. Towns fouls him, and that's three on Carl Anthony Towns, and that could be a little bit of a factor. Now you got to convert on the free throw line. Well, you just bring in another seven footer is all you do, bring in Dakari Johnson. But he's not the offensive performer that Towns is. So Towns on that. Final and Portis will have to sit after this free throw. Well, to show you the difference, you bring in a guy that's going to be a first round draft choice versus a guy who will be the second pick of the draft. So you don't lose a whole lot. I mean, how many guys can bring in another first round draft choice? You've got to make foul shots, though. He's missing crucial foul shots, really struggling. Got the second. Eight points for Bobby Portis. Only 13 down. They're going to make a strong run right here, Arkansas. So they're not going to change. They're going to push in the basketball, double up on the ball. Good things happen when the ball is in the hands of this little guy. Look at the head up. All this up. I love that. His head's up. Always looking for a team. He's got to keep his head up. He's only 5'9". <laughs> I think they stretched out. What about 5'7"? Down on the shot clock. Back to Ulysses. Oh, I got a post it. Missed the screen miles. from Johnson. Got it to Carly Stein. Hook shot. Portis clears off the miss. Trying to throw a little sky hook. Trying to make like a lead right there. Madden walked. Bobby Portis again coming in averaging almost 18 points and nine rebounds a game. And the numbers yesterday, four points against Georgia. Did have 12 rebounds. Today, eight points, one board. That's why it was an impressive win over Georgia. In fact, they won by double digits, and he didn't have a big game. But Georgia was playing hurt. They played without games. That's a big loss. And Jawan Parker, most of the game with a bad Achilles. Georgia heading to the NCAA tournament as well. We know Arkansas, Kentucky, and Georgia are going. LSU and Ole Miss are hoping. They're all taking bubble bats right now, hoping that, <laughs> yeah. that bubble doesn't burst. Dick will be part of the crew tonight on our selection show. Bob's going to be up here. It'll be his second bracketology special. Everything you need to know about the field of 68 coming up tonight. Presented by Staples, 7 o'clock with live sports center updates at 5.30 on ESPN. Those guys do a great job. The whole production team, everybody there works religiously. Dick, Unbelievable. Dick will be on that show tonight from here in town. Couldn't quite get him to Bristol in time to be there. Zone. I missed Willie Coley. Had him a little earlier. Had him earlier. Double up. Harrison, pull up jumper. Got it. He is shooting the ball so well. Both of them are. Third three for Aaron Harrison. That's his forte. He's an outstanding shooter, but he's in a rhythm. He's a rhythm shooter. Offensive foul. Williams goal with that offensive foul inside. Put to the guy with. Oh, there it is. Yep. Yes, sir. Here's the elbow out. Here's Harrison on the previous possession, knocking down the three. 11 points for Aaron. His brother's got two threes as well. So five triples between the twins for Kentucky. That's pretty good. 15 big points in the book. He was wide open on the last look for the three. 
He very rarely did bad shots. That's part of the unselfishness. Pass the ball, make the extra pass, look for a teammate inside. Like that. Look at that right there. That was a perfect example, Brad. As we said at halftime, they had 12 assists on 14 made field goals. And they're still playing that way here in the second half with their biggest lead of the ball game. They love passing the ball. That's reminiscent years ago when I watched Dean Smith's club. Michelangelo maybe rest in peace when his club used to share the basketball with all those great big players. Dean Smith, who went 27 straight years with 20 wins or more. Next in line, 21 straight, John Calipari. Wow. Well, you're right on top of it. You are right on top of it. I have to be working with you. Dakar Johnson foul. Uh, on the way to the hoop, five quarters. Kentucky really dominating on the interior, taking advantage of their size. You know, you got size, but the key is to take advantage of it. And John Gallibari does a great job with that. It was never a doubt to me when he got the Kentucky job that he would be a success. After watching what he did and building that Massachusetts program was amazing. And now you give them all the resources, and they got all the resources. <laughs> yeah, they do. They got them all <laughs> down there. They got the resources in Bridgestone Arena, too. I'd say about maybe 17,000 resources of the 18,000 plus that are here. People at Bridgestone do a great job. I spoke at a big convention with John Burrata and all his salespeople. Real great bunch of guys sent me a text earlier today. To... Harris just inside the three point line. They're going to start making some shots, man. That's really, you know, it's, just, it's very simple. Who's Pearl and I talked before the game? Very simple. You got to make shots. Euless in the paint, got it. He'll make shots. He'll make passes. He'll make scores. He'll make points. He'll make Calabari happy. I love seeing a guy who a lot of people probably can't play at this level. He's too small. They listen to 5'9. There's no way he's 5'9. Nice job to get it inside to Anton Beard. He's been a big Oh, look at this. Arkansas. Look Probably at this. Got fouled before what would have been a slam. Madden got to him before he could get to the basket. 15 16. And I said, it's mostly blue in here. If they're not in Bridgestone, they're in the bars of Music City. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Mazda CX-5 and the new Taco Bell app. Millions of combinations. What will you make? Ashley Judd just blew a kiss to Dick Vitale from across the courts. She gave me a kiss at halftime, and I got proof of it. You saw my Twitter. I Go did. to my Twitter. It's right on there. Tyler Eulis, the guy Dick's been bragging up all day, and there's a good reason. Feeding off to Marcus Lee on that one. Coming down, laying it in himself. And again, the kick out to Aaron Harrison for a triple. The little guy has been big today for Kentucky. He's been absolutely super. He's really been super scintillating sensation. I haven't used that all year. The 3S he, man? Yeah, he's the 3S man here today. I love it. You know, what a great inspiration to all the kids out there who maybe are small, thinking that you cannot play. You're going to have the work ethic, the sense of pride, the passion. By the way, did you trademark dominant with a capital D as I laid you up that one yesterday? No, I should have. Done that? Just checking. Harrison. Short. Collie Stein had the rebound, and Beard stripped it from it. Well, he brought the ball down. Beard. And to alter his shot, Portis, there's the first easy one for Bobby Portis today. That might be the easiest basket he's going to get all afternoon. Bobby just in the right place at the right time on a loose ball. Says, thank you. It's been tough. Can't miss that one. Well, it's down to 12. Yeah, they're not going away. I'm telling you, they're going to battle, they're going to fight. Typical Razorback basketball. We saw a little bit of that yesterday with Auburn, but this is not Auburn. They got talent on the floor. Auburn didn't have enough talent. Missed two starters yesterday. Especially no size. Right. Here, trying to give Aaron Harrison a little backcourt pressure. He puts pressure on every time he goes in his hands. He beats you off the balance and you got to give help. He's going to get the ball right to the wide open guy. 
Trying to get into Towns and Portis comes up with a steal. That ball was telegraphed. You can see the right from here by one eye. You can see he was passing the ball there. They score here will be down to 10 or less if they hit a three. He's a big possession for them. Psychologically, a big possession. Walls had it stuffed, but it'll still be Arkansas ball. He showed you the graphic earlier. Kentucky number two in the country in block shots. This is the reason why. Guys like Cauley Stein and Towns are the two top shot blockers on this Wildcat team. That's their fifth block shot today. I'll tell you one thing, it's great when you got multiple number of guys that can block shots. Really takes away the driving game, makes teams have to shoot from the perimeter. And this is the largest crowd ever for an SEC tournament game at Bridgestone Arena. I undercut it earlier when I said something around 18,000. 20,315. They all came to see you here. <laughs> you and Ashley. I've been here since Wednesday. There's plenty of opportunity to see me. Well, Nancy can't wait to get you at home. <laughs> I bet. If she answers the phone. <laughs> I heard from Reese. I heard from Reese, your daughter. Aaron Harrison picks up the foul. The one thing that Kentucky does well, not only block shots on the inside, John Calabari and his staff, you know, John Robick, you look there, you see certainly Mr. Warson, the whole gang, Kenny Payne, they do a great job of guarding on the perimeter. They really guard you on the perimeter. Matt Adams having a little discussion, I think, with Bobby Portis and Carl Anthony Towns, who are bumping down on a low block right now. And they're still bumping. Portis wants it, got it. Leaning in, over, and he's fouled. So they talked about him, and then they banged and banged and banged, and Towns picks up his fourth foul. He's got to make these fouls. Get it down to 10. Carl Anthony fouled out yesterday. He's one personal away from doing so again. There's the foul. And it sends Bobby Portis to the free throw line. Kentucky fans still don't like the call. And as Portis hits the free throw. I don't see the same swag and the same what we saw, that unbelievable bounce out of Kentucky like we saw in the first half. I don't know, maybe get a little complacent here with the lead. They look dangerous. This team can put points on the board quickly. They lead the SEC in scoring, Arkansas. This could make it a 10-point game where it was 116. Doesn't get the second one up. Struggling on a free throw line. And Aaron Harrison got popped in the face by Michael Qualls. Unintentional, but he got it right in the yeah, Totally accidental. Poor pass by his brother to him. Made him have to reach way up for it. Right but, there, yep. in the nose. That's what Mayweather's going to do in that big battle on May 2nd. Who you taking? Mayweather, absolutely. I saw him one time live, and I couldn't believe how quick his fists were. Maybe you should buy me some tickets or take me out there. I can't believe the price they're asking. Yeah, I know. That's tickets. why I said you have to take oh, me wow. out there. Aaron Harrison trying to get the tears out of his eyes after getting popped in the nose. They're just taking a look right now. I don't think that's it. It, it was unintentional. It was but. totally unintentional. I think they'll agree to that. You can even see Michael Qualls pull his hand back like, whoops, I didn't mean to hit you. You know, a lot of teams, when they fall behind 15, 16, they go really, they're going to go south. This Arkansas team is scrapping here and clawing, still battling. Harrison still kind of licking his lips a little bit, make sure everything's in the right spot. <laughs> so he comes over in front of us to take the inbounds pass with Qualls on him. So both Harrison twins and Euless in the lineup right now for Kentucky. Yeah, three really solid guards playing. Here goes. One Harrison to Carly Stein inside for an easy one. There it is again, that's selfish. Drive the baseline, just flip it off to your teammate. And Willie Carly Stein, as I said, is heading, I think, for the gold trophy as the MVP if they're to win this game. He's got eight rebounds oh. and 10 points. Easy bucket for Kai Madden, only his first field goal of the game. Nice drive by Madden right there. Got right in the lane, good body control. 
Right now, Arkansas would love a stop and a score on the other end and get it to single digits, and you can get your mind rolling a little bit that maybe we can beat these guys. You're right. That's psychologically such a big lift to a team. Well, they almost got the stop. Portis defending Willie Cauley Stein and doing a good job of it. Oh, Bobby only saw a lap here. He's fired up. I tell you what, Bobby Portis is fired up. He wants to win. They say he's a great young guy. He learned from a terrific guy from Corliss Williamson. We almost had Bobby Portis in our lap uh, on that defensive close. play. I was really getting out of the way, jumping <laughs> your daughter Reese's lap. <laughs> Seven on the shot clock. Euless finger roll. Follows no good, and Arkansas did get the oh, stop. Did they get the ball back? Euless kicked that ball. He made that happen, but it's Arkansas ball. He hit his, uh, head. hit his head on the floor, I think. Yeah, he did. Let's see what happened. Diving for the ball, and oh, oh yeah, <laughs> man, got crushed. Watkins just sat on his head. And he's going to go to the bench. Great hustle by both teams trying to come up with that loose ball. Here's Arkansas's chance to get it to single digits. See, now here's where if you're the MVP of the league, Portis, you got to really want the ball now, and you got to take charge. Stars take charge at moments like this. If your team needs your help, you're the best player in the conference that voted you. you got to want the ball, number 10. He wants it right now. Somebody says, swing the ball reverse and get it to me. Madden. Just a careless pass in the lane. They blew an opportunity there. He tried to jam that in the Portis. Should have had it him a little bit earlier. Aaron Harrison around Portis. Lyles missed the step back. Madden will run for Arkansas. Qualls has to give it up. This is wide open. You got to get him the ball. Qualls from the free throw line. Got it. That's big. Qualls with a big one. He was big yesterday. They got it down. Out of nine. Yes, sir. I think he better lace him up. And time oh, out. Oh, that's a big lift for Arkansas to make him take a timeout. The press got to Harris, and he couldn't find anybody to inbound to at 11.48, remaining in the half. And Michael Qualls with a pull-up jumper has cut the lead for Kentucky down to single digits. I'm Reese Davis, the latest Dish, brought to you by Dish, A-10 Championship game, VCU and Dayton. Dyshawn Pierre cleaning up with a loose ball and tying the game for the Flyers against the Rams. Also have the Sun Belt Men's Championship game going on on ESPN2. Kevin Ware, the former Louisville player, has 18 points. Remember, he broke his leg in the NCAA tournament game against Duke. That game is tied at 32. We have the American Conference Championship game, UConn and SMU. Tipping off in just under 41 minutes. Huskies reigning national champions looking for their first conference tournament title since 2011. The team that beat Kentucky on a national championship a year ago. Why all the haters? Well, Christian Leitner played in four straight Final Fours. Why has everybody disliked him for so long? ESPN Films, 30 for 30. I hate Christian Leitner. Tonight at 9 on ESPN, presented by Volkswagen TDI. <laughs> One of the great shots ever in any sport. And it was against Kentucky, of course. That's coming up 9 o'clock tonight. That follows our selection show that Mr. Vital will be part of. So will Reese Davis, obviously. Reese has to have along with us. Yeah, Reese working overtime, man. He's working total overtime. Lately should be a Hall of Famer. No question on his collegiate career. Let's see Kentucky being challenged now. Let's see how they respond. I haven't seen many teams that force Kentucky to call a timeout like we saw. We're going to foul on Alanis Harris. Battling with Lyles. And now we head to the TV timeout. Willie Cauley Stein's been the star. Bobby Porter struggling a little bit, but trying to get his hogs back in the picture. 48 39. Not quite yet. It was 16 points at halftime, and not quite yet on the scissors because Arkansas has come back with 11 28 remaining. They've done a nice job of hanging in, hanging tough. We said they played pretty well in the first half, but didn't have anything to show for it. The second half, they've outscored Kentucky 14 to 7. 
making some shots. This point is for the offensive rebound. Walls with that big jumper at the foul line. That's they the one that cut it to single digits, which is where we are right now. You know, because like you had that swag in the first half. Came out with a little chip on his shoulder that he want to win this SEC tournament. I see a little bit right now. There was a little complacency. Now they're going to turn up that water. Man, turn the water for us and I stop playing. Trey Lyles will go to the free throw line. Scoreless today. He's got a one and one right here. At 12 points yesterday, had 18 points in the regular season meeting between these two teams. That Kentucky won 84 to 67. Kentucky only seven points. That's eight. Now. Check in with Shannon. Now, Brad, make them uncomfortable. That's exactly what Mike Anderson said to his guys in the huddle. And I will tell you one player who is laser focused is Bobby Portis. He was shaking his head back and forth, mumbling something under his breath. He was not happy with his performance yesterday, and absolutely wanted to make it better today. It's kind of like a quarterback. You got to make them uncomfortable in the pocket. He would like to make Kentucky just a little bit uncomfortable if they would get it down around seven or six, something like that. Right now, it goes back to 11. Trying to spread the court, driving off the bat. Nice, nice drive. drive by Quarles. Good isolation. Here's the backcourt pressure again. Double team on Ulis. Having a little issue back there. Going to pick up his dribble. Made him pick up his dribble. He took a timeout again. That's the second time in the last three minutes Kentucky that Kentucky's had to take a timeout because of the press. Michael Qualls, who didn't start the game but was our star of the game yesterday, going to work here against Harrison and drives inside to get it back to a nine-point deficit. Nice little isolation, utilizes his athletic ability, gets the pressure after the score, double him up. He's going to pick up his dribble in no man land. He's forced to call a timeout. You don't see Kentucky call him any timeouts. Well, the NCAA Women's College Basketball Championship begins and ends on ESPN. But before they cut those nets, you have to make it to the dance. Our experts will reveal the 64 teams playing for the national title. NCAA Women's Selection Special presented by Capital One. It's tomorrow night at 7 o'clock on ESPN. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Shannon Spake, Sean Farnham, Carl Ravitz, Bruce Pearl, and our entire ESPN crew at Bridgestone Arena Mike with Slide. the commish, Mike Slide. He's been an outstanding commissioner, been absolutely super in his career, what he's done for the SEC. Going to retire July 31st. Had his granddaughter out here before the game. That's the love of his life, and uh, that, that'll take a lot of his time when he's still not being involved with SEC sports. He's done a fantastic job, especially in football and the SEC and yeah. marketing. And there was a commitment made a couple of years ago about improving basketball, not just Kentucky, but this conference, and they have done a remarkable job when you consider that the 10, 11, and 13th seeds advanced to yesterday's games in the SEC tournament, or I should say Friday's games in the SEC tournament, shows that the, the bottom half of the league is a lot better than it used to be, and the top half, of course, is capped off by the group we're watching, the two groups we're watching right now. Yeah, really have a lot more balance when you, after Kentucky. Kentucky was obviously all alone. But from number two down, there was more balance. And a lot of movement right now, a lot of motion. Walls again on the drive. I'll tell you one thing, you can see the athletic ability he possesses. Very explosive. Harrison now breaks the press of Matty Watkins, but again, it's a nine-point advantage for Kentucky. Harrison forced one there, drew the foul from either Portis or Qualls. And the other Harrison in pain over there on the side. I don't know what happened to him. We take right here, look at Qualls. Catch the ball, face triple threat oh. position, sees a gap, goes see, right to the goal. I know what happened to Aaron Harrison now. He tried to get around a screen on the other end, and he got one in the hip, and that's what's bothering him right now. Came around the screen on the other end, and he's heading to the bench, and he's in some serious discomfort. He looks like really in pain there. Andrew Harrison, his brother, at the free throw line. Ten point advantage as we approach ten minutes remaining in the SEC Tournament Championship. Hey, Brad, do you see the little extra bounce at the Arkansas team? I see the little extra bounce right now added up on every possession. They need to make every possession count right now. Get good shots and then play defense if they have any chance at all. 
Watkins, forced one up there, but he did get a foul. No, we're going to call a traveling violation. Mike Anderson not happy on that sideline. It was a big possession right there. Trying to, they're trying to clear out that left side of the court, the right side. Looked like he dragged this pivot back, huh? You wanted to be an official yesterday. <laughs> I wouldn't have called that one, but that's just me. Oh, he's died to Curry Johnson. Mishandled the pass, and then he got mugged underneath. I think trying to attack off that pressure. It's physical out there. You better lace him up. Very physical. And he's holding his shoulder. Foul is on Kingsley. Arkansas looking for their second SEC tournament championship. For Kentucky, it's kind of just a normal thing. They're looking for their 28th. So you got Aaron Harrison on the bench holding his left hip. You got Dakari Johnson wondering if he can get his shoulder up high enough to shoot a free throw. Well, he looks at pain on that shoulder as well. I tell you, the physicality, John Calabar talked about that before the game. He said, they're going to be very physical, and we have to be ready to combat that. Johnson has missed all of his free throws in the second half after hitting a couple in the first half. Watkins goes out for Arkansas, and Rashad Madden checks back in. I tell you what, Arkansas has done really well in the second half, Brad. They have stopped the transition game. They're not allowing them to go up and down the floor with those slam jams we saw in the first half. Even though Carl Anthony Towns has four fouls, John Calipari knows he's got to get him in there for Dakari Johnson because he's in some discomfort with that shoulder. He did get the second free throw, and now he's going to come out, and Towns will come in. I go right out Towns right now. See if he can get the fifth foul. Yep. They can have to play John. Look at Big Blue Nation now rising. They're rising. They really know their team needs a little bit of that adrenaline from the crowd. They know that they're halfway through the second half and half three quarters of the way to 34 0. And Quarles yeah. is going to work for Arkansas. You know the best player on the floor right now in the second half did? Quartz. He's been tremendous in the second half. 13 for the game for Michael. He scored Arkansas's last eight points. Nice drive by Harrison. They love that. John Gallibert keeps preaching. I need Harris to attack, to attack, Andrew. Attack. So Cross got the big size advantage now on Yulis. And he can really jump. He's a skywalker. He's going to post him inside. And a foul on Booker. That's what Dick was talking about, Andrew Harrison. And John calipari has been preaching this forever. When this guy penetrates and drives, good things happen, including that left-handed layup off the window. Did a great job there using the left hand, going in strong. Balls now, no Eulis on him. He's got Lyles checking him. Might be too quick for you Lyles. three. Swatted out, out of bounds, Kentucky basketball. And Willie Cauley Stein has a cut on the bridge of his nose. So you got Bakari Johnson nursing his shoulder on the right hand side of your screen. Willie Cauley Stein is bleeding, and Aaron Harrison sitting next to Willie with a hip pointer. <laughs> Been a tough day. Yeah, real tough day. He's got Portis on the sideline. Andrew Harrison got away from Qualls, but Qualls came back and got a piece of that ball from behind. Still, Lyles is there for his first field goal. That's one of the great strands on the offensive last. He battled, 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 and then he get a little. Nice play right there. Nice dish by Madden to Kingsley. Got a and team for having the rim. And what a tremendous play by Madden to create that opportunity. Two point guards with Madden and Beard. Look at the penetration on the baseline. A little nice reverse. Wrap around. Yep. And then He's hanging on. Stayed up there too long. Yep. So the technical will be Andrew Harrison at the free throw line. You know, Portis only got two fouls. Can you feel why he's out of the lineup? It's unless he's getting a breather to the eight minute TV timeout. I don't know why. 
He doesn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody must have ran down and said, hey, go look at the way now. He's shaking his head. I don't know. Harrison missed the second. We're not talking about just an average player. We're talking about the MVP of the SEC. That's overall those unbelievable players that wear a Kentucky uniform. He keeps shaking that head. <laughs> in the backcourt, not the normal person to bring it across the timeline against some pressure, so he'll hand it off to Ewis. He's got a better handle than most people believe. Spinning the court now, went to a little one four set, now he's trying to double low post. He lies, he towns. Holly Stein on the bench, still a 6'11 and 6'10 guy up front for Kentucky. Five on the shot clock. Andrew Harrison has a look. He's going to have to take it. There it goes. Down it goes. Right guy took it. Right guy took it. He's got some swag to his game. Back to 15. Qualls will try to quiet the crowd. Not this time. Here Time's comes the Cavs. Here comes Big Blue Nation. You better get Portis back on that floor. Yeah, he's waiting at the scorer's table, but we need a whistle first. How quickly you play that tough and all of a sudden the spurt. Yep. Bam, offensive rebound, jump shot, and before you know you're looking 15 down. Miles, Euless, great entry pass to Towns, up and in. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here are the Cavs. That's number one in the nation. That's going for 34 and zip. They love them. Just like that, the lead is back to the largest of the game with seven to play. Look at this pass by Eulis. Great Bam. look inside. Great catch and a great finish. Kentucky has all the parts. They got perimeter players. They got inside players. They got coaching. I give you the rest of the nation, and I'm taking Kentucky to win it all. The last 48 field goals they've made through this tournament, they have 31 assists. Think about it. That is unbelievably impressive. Share in the rock. Making sure each guy gets the ball at the right time and get the high percentage shot. I mean, you don't have to be a genius. Nobody like me can figure it out, Brad. If you get high percentage shots with the ability they have, you can win some games. You can win some games. <laughs> with the players they have, you can win some games, too. Yeah. I you have these guys, you still be coaching. Yeah, now if I had these guys, I might be like uh, 30 and choke. <laughs> <laughs> you would have messed up at least I would have messed up two games. <laughs> Madden, rejected by Towns. Second chance coming from the outside. See, that's a problem. They don't shoot well from the perimeter. And Portis can't get to the ball. Out of bounds to Kentucky. If you're not making perimeter shots, eventually you'll score around the basket, but they'll wear you down. They'll wear you down with their depth and fresh legs. That fresh look at legs. Bobby Portis pretty much tells the story, doesn't it? ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. Sport begs of you this one simple question. Who will you be? And the Lexus Command Performance Sales Event. Now through March 31st, see your Lexus dealer. Five seconds, four seconds, two seconds, one second, the ball thrown in the air, and the title has returned to its old Kentucky home. 2012 National Championship. In the pursuit of perfection, here's the comparison. If you want to compare at this point, it would be 40 and 0 if Kentucky ran the table from this point on. And you still think that this team can beat this team? Well, you know, I really love this team, obviously, but I really thought that team was special. Anthony Davis is on another league compared to anyone else. Michael Kidd, Gilchrist. You think about Jones. You think about Darius Miller, Lamb, that team. That team, to me, was special. This team is special. Two, guy, wrong. two guys that went one and two in the draft. Not Absolutely, bad. yeah. And Anthony Davis, you know, he's right there as one of the top three guys in the league right now. He's so good. This team doesn't have, well, they've got a whole bunch of superstars. But when you look at statistics, they don't have because they have so many players, including Aaron Harrison. 
who is the leading scorer, but only 11.3 a game. And then you got a guy like Willie Cauley Stein, who only averages nine points a game, and he's been the best player on the floor the last three days. You know, they wear you down with their legs, too, because they're fresh legs. They don't play a lot of minutes. Well, Look at that. by Cauley Stein, but fouled. His stock going up and up and up, Willie Cauley Stein. I want a little. That'd be his agent. Here he is right there working on the inside. You can't teach that size, Brad. Going up, up, up. Is he an elevator yeah. man then? He's up, up, up in the way, man. <laughs> the biggest lead of the ball game at the six-minute mark as Michael Qualls goes to the line. You know, I was talking about Kentucky earlier. John could have won a couple more national titles. Last year, by 13 for 24 on a free throw line, they lose by six. And a couple of years ago, they lost to Connecticut, and they were four for 12 on a free throw line. So you total that, that's... Right now, my math tells me 17 for 36, and that really cost him two national titles. Then if you factor in a Memphis game, when he was at Memphis against Kansas, they missed some free throws at the end. They could have really solidified in that championship. This is a better free throw shooting team than they were yeah, a year ago. And absolutely. guys like Carly Stein have just improved completely from the free throw line by hard work. He shot under 50% from the line last year. He's at 60 now. I mean, Arkansas really challenged him here. Came on the second half. Carly Stein trying to lob it to Towns. He's trying to make like a guard. He wants to make like Euless. Madden dishes off to Harris, who got in too deep and threw it away. Looks like he had an easy layup. Then all of a sudden come these big, big guys. Lyles fouled by Madden on the other end. I think an interesting matchup would be with Wisconsin. Wisconsin has the kind of personnel and the way they control the tempo of a game if they got an early lead on they played Kentucky and then Kaminsky just has been absolutely sensational all year. Well, a lot of people were worried about Wisconsin ending up in the same region in the NCAA tournament with Kentucky but that has switched now at least in Joe Lenardi and a lot of people's minds as Wisconsin's probably the number one seed now so they wouldn't be in the same bracket obviously as the Wildcats. Well you know the Wild Wildcats, as you see right now, number one, it's going to be interesting to see who goes there. Number two in their region, looking right here, is the two seeds. I mean, Arizona's been really playing well. A team that's got a lot of talent there, Gonzaga. What about Notre Dame, man? You beat Duke and you beat North Carolina right. within 24 hours in the state of North Carolina. My man, Mike we're, Gray, huh? yeah, we're talking that? basketball, not football. <laughs> we're not talking football. You beat Duke in Carolina within 24 hours. Mike Bray, congratulations. Yeah, great job. Lead getting closer to 20 after Arkansas got it down to 19. Bobby Portis, offensive foul. Frustration. Total frustration. He's a good player. He's got some time off after this tournament. Get himself ready for the NCAA tournament. We have not seen the real Bobby Portis. Kentucky had a little bit of trouble getting the ball inbound again. Put it in the hands of Yulis. Good things happen. Again, Kentucky with that three-guard offense of Yulis and the Harrison Twins. Along with Cauley Stein and Towns. It's good when you got handles like that against the Arkansas pressure. Up, under, not in though, but Towns keeps it alive. And a fresh shot clock. Wisely, they bring it out and use some clock as we're under five minutes. Paul Anthony Towns has so much potential, it's unreal. Came from the same high school, produced a terrific player, one of our colleagues, Mr. Williams. St. Joe's McCutcheon. Here he is on the low block, double teamed, and threw it away trying to get it to Carly Stein. As soon as, as soon as he saw the double team, nice pass from Claus to Alanis Harris. That's Arkansas basketball. Paul's having a little issue trying to get his foot back in his sneaker. He ate the turnover, go up the other way and get a layup. I'll tell you what I like about Gulas is leadership ability. He takes charge on the floor. Make sure to get into their offense. Right now he gets off the ball and Harrison takes over at the point. And a foul on Madden. Go to rule three, two set, two guys down inside on the low box. So with just over four minutes remaining, Kentucky in command. 
UConn and SMU coming up next in the American Championship. And Willie Cauley Stein, who's probably going to be the most valuable player of the SEC tournament, steps to the free throw line. Uh, he should be. He should be. Made my old Rolls Royce first team. Yesterday he had 18 points, seven rebounds, two assists, and three block shots. Today he's got 13 right now. And about to add to it. Some of those numbers don't even tell the story of how many shots he alters yeah, right, exactly. He's such a factor on the floor. He's a difference maker. But now Mike Anderson just wants his team to keep playing hard because this one's just about the books with under four minutes to go. There'll be a tough out in the NCAA tournament. They played a different style of ball today. When they played in the regular season against Kentucky, they wanted to run, 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 and they got run out of the gym. And today, they were down 8 nothing in the opening minute or so before Mike Anderson called a timeout. And since that point, they have battled. But they're just not as good as the guys in the white uniforms. Oh, what a nice move. Got fouled. Good head fake. 327 away from 34 and 0. 69 and 50, Kentucky. Reese Davis with you. We have another ticket punch that comes from the Sun Belt, Georgia State and Georgia Southern, 38-36. That is not halftime. It is the end of the game. And R.J. Hunter didn't have a great game celebrating with his father, Ron Hunter, who's the coach at Georgia State. And unfortunately, Ron hurt his ankle. He's being attended to, helped to the bench, but I'm sure the victory will help ease some of that pain. They have it wrapped up and iced up at Georgia State on its way to the NCAA tournament. Ryan Boatwright hopes to take UConn there in the American Conference Championship game coming against Larry Brown and SMU in under 12 minutes. All right, Reese, thanks. So the Panthers and the Eagles, Georgia State and Georgia Southern split the regular season and ends up being a two-point game in the championship wow. of the Sun Belt. Here, Willie Cauley Stein in Kentucky en route to the SEC Tournament Championship. And he is our player of the game, brought to you by Cree LED Lighting. There's his numbers, his 11th career double-double, third this year. And a sensational tournament here in Nashville for Willie Cauley Stein. He's made my first team All-American one with Oglefort, Kaminsky, DeAngelo Russell from out of Ohio State, and Jerry and Grant of, of Notre Dame. What do you think of those five? Pretty good, huh? I think you could win with those guys. Yeah, I have a chance. Biggest lead of the game, oh. it is 20 now, as Carly Stein trying to block another shot, and instead picks up the foul. Nice little motion, cutting without the ball, nice cut to the basket. Willie Carly Stein with the foul from the rear. Nice little bounce pass. <laughs> He might have had an argument. He might have had an argument. And you know what? Uh, I'm going to give it to the Harris still had his hand on the ball, and it just about took his shoulder out, so I think it's good enough to call that a foul. Although the Kentucky faithful think it was a block shot. Atlantis Harris at the free throw line. They want more, more, and more down in Kentucky. Hey, Paul Biancardi just sends me a text. He says, SEC life is going to get better and better. LSU has a number one player coming in, Ben Simmons. Say also, you're talking about nine SEC teams, he said, are ranked in the top 40 in recruiting. And of course, of course, the Cats are number one. Ben Simmons has already been named the Naismith High School Basketball Player of the Year. I saw him play a person, Ron. Right? He's good. the real deal. And they're getting another great kid, Antonio Blakeney, who is also legitimate. And if the M&M's, Martin and Mickey stay, that would be quite a lineup. Wow. LSU, of course, got disappointed by Auburn in this SEC tournament. That was really the shock of the tournament to me. That was the shock of the tournament. Auburn had the bonus run. They made us smile the most, unless you're a Kentucky fan, because in three minutes you're going to be smiling at 34-0 and, of course, hoping for 40-0. Only three teams 
have been able since Indiana in 76, when undefeated, have been undefeated going into the NCAA tournament. Andrew Harrison falling down, buries a three. And they just jump up with joy. Wichita State was undefeated. UNLV was undefeated. And Harry Bowen, those three teams, St. Joe's was undefeated. They got beaten in their conference tournament. Let's take a look at today's amazing play brought to you by TurboTax. And as my partner would say, Sharon DeRock, Mr. Nestle, are you serious? Are you serious? <laughs> you want the Dickie V sounding like Charles Nestle, man. <laughs> Great team basketball, very unselfish. Kentucky team, 15 assists today. He's passed the basketball so well, and they defend so well. Different kind of defensive team than Virginia. Virginia with great position on defense. This team utilizes that size, athleticism, pressure on the basketball. I got a feeling Bobby Portis, when they play their first NCAA tournament game, is going to have a huge outing because it hasn't been his best trip here in Nashville. And it's not the kind of guy that we saw over the course of the season. SEC Player of the Year averaging 17.7 and 8.8 .8 rebounds a game, and it isn't any, anywhere near that here at Bridgestone Arena. I would say amen to that statement because this kid's got a lot of pride in himself, and now he'll have some time to be able to sit, analyze, relax. So he's getting a little conversation. Coach Anderson will tap on the back. And we move for the tournament. Just over two minutes remaining for Kentucky to still be perfect. You know, people started before the season started. And they got this great class coming at you. Look at that speed. And they have to get the ball back out because of the size of the side. Stripped by Euless, but still Qualls underneath. Euless really played well. Yeah. You know, before the season started, out of Kentucky, people were talking 40 and up. And the people said, well, can we be realistic? You know what? It's realistic now, it baby. <laughs> it's realistic now. I even think when the tournament comes, you're going to see a play even on a higher level than you've seen. And they're playing on a pretty high level right now. But I think you're going to even see a higher level like we saw earlier in the year. They're going to play with purpose. They want to do what Bob Knight did in 76 when they ran the table. A great Indiana team that did it. Wilkerson and May and Benson, Abernathy, and their leader, Quinn Buckner, who is a real tremendous point guard. Now, some of the guys that started the game are going to be coming out of the game as John Calipari goes to his bench and doesn't lose much quality at all by doing so, but he gives the fans a chance to give a standing ovation to Collie Stein and the Harrison twins. And Lyles at the free throw line trying to cap off the three point play. All his points have come in the second half for Trey. That was amazing. You don't hear anybody complaining about playing time. You don't hear anybody moaning and groaning. Well, when you win, that solves it. That happens if you lose it. Oh, yeah, sir. We said he's a high riser. We said he's the elevator man. We said if you go up, up and away, Mr. Gwals, he can jam, man. He can get to the sky. I think he's the number one guy in college basketball as far as making Sports Center's top ten plays. He might have added another one. I don't know. This wasn't bad, though. He's done with authority. He'd rather have a little simple layup and be up on the scoreboard. He didn't start the game, but he's finishing as strong as he can. Had a steal on the previous possession, a slam there. Dick talked about uh, the NCAA champions that went undefeated, the last one being Indiana at 32. No, it started with Bill Russell and the guys in San Francisco, and then Frank McGuire's North Carolina team, 32 and 0. Then he rules a blue. John Wooden, so many great wow, teams. Wow. 30 and zip. Pretty good talent there in that picture. Yeah, not and then bad. Indiana, you just talked about the guys involved. 32-0 to win the title in 76. Look at that young Robert Montgomery Knight. Yeah, the hair's not even white yet. That team was so well drilled, played great team defense, shared the ball, great motion game. Bill Walton and company, Lewis Alcindor. All the things you just said about that Indiana team, if I closed my eyes and wasn't looking at the graphics, you could be talking about this group right here that we're watching from Lexington. Yeah, you're right about that. Very unselfish team, share the ball, defend. I get a little motion, spin in the court. You know, I looked at the statue. You know who's got the most minutes today? Yulis. Right here, Yulis. Had the most minutes yesterday, too. Under a minute. 
You don't have to be the biggest, most dominant player. Big Blue Nation might as well stand for the rest of the game. Chasing the dream. Oh, they're on cloud nine. They're so proud there with Big Blue Nation. Everybody up. They're up. They're cheering with joy. And they have a lot to cheer about. Tip in underneath by Kingsley. And that's just a matter of wasting away the next 39 seconds. Well, you got great horse racing down there. You got tremendous horse forms. And you got basketball. It's hard to be an undefeated horse unless you're secretariat. But this team, a bunch of thoroughbreds. They got a lot of secretariat. seconds away from 34 and 0. They got a lot of thoroughbreds, man. And nine McDonald's All Americans. Kid, I feel bad for his pointless. He came back to yeah. school, got injured. And he's there cheering for the team on the sideline. They're not even going to, well, they will take a shot. Marcus Lee just throws one up there to try to avoid the shot clock. And now, the all tournament team already. Michael Qualls, KT Harrell of Auburn, Willie Collins down at Kentucky along with the Harrison twins. And the most valuable player, the guy that Dick and I called earlier in this half. There he is. He's become a little more assertive on the offensive side. I think you'll see that in the NCAA tournament. The last shot goes to Arkansas, but the win goes to Kentucky. The old Kentucky hole, my friends. It's been a lot of fun, Brad. Enjoyed it, Shannon. Brad, all the guys in the truck. Terrific job. A wealth of talent for the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Still unblemished. 78-63 is the final score. In the NCAA tournament, we one question. Who will be able to beat Kentucky? I don't know. I haven't seen it yet this year. Yet <laughs> Who knows? Maybe somebody will have a perfect night and Kentucky will have an off night. But so far, they haven't had an off night all year long. SEC tournament champions for the 28th time. Wildcats of Kentucky and their coach of the year is with Shannon Spake. Coach, you knew that this was going to be a physical game, but at one point you had three of your guys on the bench. Carl Anthony Towns in foul trouble. What do you think about the way the guys fought through well, the adversity? Andrew started so well, got that second foul and recovered at the end of the game. Carl, the same deal. But that's what happens when you have enough guys because I thought Dakari played well. Um, and Marcus Lee played well in his minutes. Uh, Willie was a beast. Tyler was really good. Aaron was good. They were good. It was a good game for us. You have told your guys you couldn't wait for the regular season to be over. As you reflect on it, what are you most proud of? We haven't lost one yet. That's ridiculous, to be honest with you. But um, um, we were, we're, we're, we're ready. Let's, let's get on with this next tournament. We know how hard it's going to be. Every game we're going to play is a war. We're not going to get a pass. It's going to be a hard bracket. We know it. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Our thing is, let's be at our best. Let's individuals be the best version of themselves. If that's not good enough, it's not the best of five. These are all one and done games. You're in or you're out. Thank you, Coach. We'll move over here to Willie Cauley-Stein, who is one of the guys on the bench. You can see the bandage on your nose. Every single week, every single game, you guys get everybody's best shot. How have you been able to battle and fight through all that adversity? Uh, I mean, we prepare for it. Um, you know, Coach prepares us in practice. Um, you know, we fail each other in practice. We, we go at each other hard in practice because, you know, in the games, it's going to be like that. So we try to make practice harder than the games, and uh, that's why we're able just to play through everything. You've been here before. You went through this last season. The pressure is coming. How has this season prepared all of you guys for what you're going to face when next week starts? Um, like you said, we get everybody's best shot. So coming into the uh, tournament next week, we're going to get whoever we're matched up with best shot. And um, I mean, they're going to get our best shot. So it's going to be it's going to be a good game regardless. But um, and the whole season prepared us for it. Thank you for Willie Colley sign. You guys go celebrate this SEC tournament win back to you guys. Well, as John Calipari said, Willie was a beast. I'm afraid there's a whole group of beasts on that Wildcat team. They win the SEC Tournament Championship for the 28th time. And just another golden moment for Kentucky basketball. Oh, how big was that shot? Good luck.
It's been fun from Nashville. Thanks for all the folks in Music City for being so good to us. Great tournament. Congratulations to the Kentucky Wildcats tournament champions for 2015. For Dick Vitale, Sean Farnham, Shannon Spade, Carl Ravage, Bruce Pearl, Brad Nessler, so long from Music City.